I'm going to show you how to do a tape path alignment on this JVC whatever this is. You guys have seen this thing too many times. What is it? It's an HRD 870 of course. We're going to do a tape path alignment on this. This is the machine. You've seen this thing three times before now. This is the fourth video. and Maybe we'll make some more on this one. This is quite a common machine. So a very popular machine. There was very many models that JVC made that used the same chassis. So what you see here can be applied to many different uh, machines. Uh, I've intentionally buggered up the tape path alignment on this thing so that uh, we can do an alignment using a scope. So if I put it on play, well, you'll see it's just an absolute mess. Okay, it looks like crap. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the scope. Maybe tilt the scope a bit so you can see it a bit better. Maybe move the camera a bit. First thing we need to do is we need to find our switching test point. We'll put on channel 2. Our switching test point on this machine here is on this connector, the green connector. I believe it's like the third one over from the right. There it is. There's our switching pulse. I've got my scope set up to trigger off of channel 2. So we're going to trigger our scope from that. we can get this thing to stay in there. There we go. Okay. Now we can go back to channel 1. We need to find our RF test point. And our RF test point is going to be one of these shielded wires here off of this other plug. There's our RF test point there. So we'll just put our scope in on that RF test point there. Okay. This is a mess. We want this waveform to be flat. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our top and bottom guides do that. Try and do this without standing too much in the shot. Grab my little uh, screwdriver for adjustment and we'll just pick one to start with. And as you can see, I'm making it worse. This is the end of my test. This is the end of my uh, frame here. So I want to adjust that so that there we go. It's relatively flat there. That's the bottom. The top side is over here. If I look at the screen here, you'll see what I've got now. And now we're going to just try adjusting the top side guide to bring it back flat. Sort of flat. Okay, that's getting there. We're not quite perfect yet. We're close, but we're not quite. We'll go back to the other guide over here and we'll just adjust it to make our output perfectly flat. It's not showing up on the camera because of the rolling shutter, but it is completely flat. And now if I pan the camera up, you'll see with the nice bar in the middle of the screen, which is caused by the rolling shutter on the camera, that our tape path is back to normal. Now on here there should be a tracking adjustment if I can find it. Tracking. Press the tracking control on here. It's an auto track mode now. As you can see what happens when I adjust the tracking. If I press both buttons it should go to auto. Okay, so now it's in auto and now I can see looking at this that my entrance guide is off a little bit because this is the leading edge, right? This is the this is the end of the scan. This is the start of the next scan. So I'm going to go back down to my my entry guide, and I'm going to adjust it ever so slightly to try and bring that back completely flat, or as close as we can getting it to flat. way pretty close pretty close there that is pretty darn good airplane flying over of course 
There's our playback. Complete with the dropouts on the tape. That's tape path alignment using a scope. You can do this without a scope too. If I want to do it without a scope, I can uh, disconnect the scope here. I can mess with the guides. You know, make the picture all screwed up. I'll mess with both guides just to mess up the picture big time. Okay, looking at the screen here. I want to adjust it, I'm just going to. I rewind my tape, my tape just got to the end, so we'll just let the tape rewind and we'll start it over from the beginning. Okay, again I shouldn't be using this camera to shoot the screen on this because of the rolling shutter effect. It's really is pathetic on these um, CMOS cameras. I should have been using my uh, HDV camera with the CCD imager because it would get a much better shot of the screen. Anyway, I'm just going to adjust my guide posts here and I'm going to adjust it until I get my the least number of lines at the bottom of the screen okay and now I'm going to go to the other guide and I'm going to adjust it ever so slightly just one way or the other to try and get the picture in The P3 guide on the our P2 guide on the left side of the drum is going to affect the top portion of the picture, and the P3 guide the, on the right side of the drum is going to affect the bottom portion of the picture. Now, without using a scope, you're never going to get it 100% perfect. But that was done without using a scope. Let's just reconnect the scope. As you can see, my scope is not connected. Let's just reconnect my scope. And we'll see how close I got it. Just by eyeballing it with the monitor. It's not going to be exact. But as you can see, it's pretty damn close to being bang on so you can do it without a without a scope it's just it takes longer with a scope you know exactly where to go uh, I got my entry or my exit guide I got pretty much perfect it's perfectly flat there my uh, entry side guide I'm off just a smidge but again now it's perfect there you go um, pretty simple uh, Pretty simple repair here. So I hope you enjoyed tape path alignment, both using a scope and without a scope. We will catch you in the next video. Bye.